Hi guys, welcome back to April and Joseph 3. Today we're going to be talking about some test taking tips for the NCLEX and HESI. We hope that these tips will help any one of you guys. Let's, Let's go. go! So for me, when I was taking, so full disclosure, I had to take the exit HESI twice. The first time um, I failed for like, I think three points. And the second time, thank God I passed. But um, so the first time it was, it was really hard because I was trying to do what everyone in my study group was doing without taking into consideration my own like circumstances in life. Yeah. Like I have to always remind myself and it happened the same thing with the anklets. I have to always remind myself that my situations and my classmate situations or my study group situations are way different than mine. What was the differences between you and like your your um, peers in terms of like differences so, like one of my peers she does have a kid but her kid is like 11 12 so you know like very different a little bit more yeah. independent and then the other two of my peers they don't really worry about anything else but just school and they work but it's more like a part-time job so they have a little bit more free time than i do so the first time when we would meet, uh, I will meet with them daily, like just studying for the HESI, uh, looking at, well, the first thing that we did was uh, looking at Mark Klimek, um, uh, the little audios. Yeah, the audios and look at the notes. Just, and that also helped me with the end clicks. Like that was the first thing I looked at because it helps you see where you have gaps. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, for, especially with this program because it was it was like a one year program and everything is so like rush some things you miss because you're just let's be honest you're just trying to pass honestly yeah. a lot of things you miss because now since like the whole pandemic thing and then having everything switched online and i feel like that itself made a lot of people just and it's easy to miss stuff like that i feel like yeah it's easy to miss and it's easy just to go through the motions to get mm -hmm. through school because mm -hmm. you're at home you can take it take exams and everything on your own time everything is, is accessible on the internet so there's a lot of gaps because yeah. of that too yeah so like me reviewing mark clemec and all that like my day would start like around 6 a.m every day and i would go to sleep around midnight every day because I have my kid and, you know, I have to take out time to because, you know, you're also going to school at the same time while you're trying to study for this test. And you also have a school test that yeah. you have to prepare for. So yeah. you have to, you know, maneuver and then just trying to um, make time for, for studying for this big because they're big tests. Yeah. And um, taking into account when I was taking the HESI first time, um, I got sick. And then my kid got sick and everybody got sick. And every time I get sick, I, I usually try to push through. But it's hard when you are taking like day quill, night quill. And then when you're also trying to like stay awake and then taking care of another human. And then taking care yeah. of like, like two humans. That's not oh, like yeah. it. Y'all say we act just like the kid too. You got to take yeah. care of everybody. <laughs> yeah. And then like when, um, let's say my kid has a bad night then you know i'm gonna have a bad yeah. night too so it's not yeah. like i let's say if i go to sleep at midnight wake up at six let's say i got like my full rest no like maybe at 2 3 a.m he woke up so now i have to wake up and that i have to you know exhausting so <laughs> yeah. um during that time like i i felt confident but i was really scared when i took the hesi the first time and when i failed like i think when i failed linda was Linda was. Oh, away. I was going to for Vanessa. It's October. We were going yes. to Seattle for Vanessa's oh, birthday. Oh, okay. Yes. And that's when you called me at the airport. Yes. I remember. And then I, I, I don't know if you guys could tell, but usually like Linda's kind of like my rock. Like every time something happens, I kind of like call her and like let her know. Yeah. So um, I feel really defeated because I I was studying a lot. Like I I think I started studying like. Mm, I want to say July, like we, my, because my study group, they're overachievers. So mm -hmm. they started like with a lot of time studying and everything. I mean, but I felt bad because sometimes they would be like ahead and I'll be like behind. Yeah, and that's July, not to, a good July to October, right? Yeah. That's a good amount like, of time. I remember Just I before. started because I remember um, Linda, Linda told me, she's like, girl, you need to start like now if you can. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. So I started, but then 
because this is like my study group was always like ahead of me so i had to catch up mm -hmm. so then when i took it i thought i was gonna do well but i ended up not doing well so then like i cried got over it and then i'm like okay i need to take it to study again for the second time and this time i'm like okay because I was able to look at Mark Lemick and see where my gaps were. Mm -hmm. Then I began using YouTube. And then I use, oh my God, what's the name of this guy? Nursing. Simple Nursing? Or yes, something. Simple Nursing. Was that used like the animation? Yes. That's my guy. Yes. <laughs> I love him. Yes. And then that's when I began to think, I'm like, okay, bro, you're not like every other person. Like you need to put in the study when you have time. Mm -hmm. So... What did I do? Whenever I go like drop off the apple, I'll be listening to it. I'll be putting on YouTube videos. Obviously, I can't look at the YouTube video, but I can listen to mm -hmm. it. And I took advantage of every little second that I have to study. I'll be going to the bathroom. I'll be looking at my phone. <laughs> because, you know, instead of looking at TikTok, yeah. I'll be mm -hmm. looking at something useful. So I only gave myself, I think it was a month because I took, you took it the first time in October and I think you have a month. A month to take it the yeah, yeah to take it the second time and then um and then also i was able to look at my results and see where i lacked on oh it tells you and kind of where it tells oh that's you, like, good yes and then this is what happened because the first time so you have math in there and i usually do well in math so the first time that i took it i didn't even look at math mm. i'm like i'm gonna do fine yeah like i don't ask yeah no. and <laughs> that was you with english right or something like that. yeah that was for yeah. the entrance exam oh uh, <laughs> I, like, I know english i know grammar i don't need to review so it. what does that tell us study everything study everything and, study and just everything. see yes. where your gaps yes. are but definitely focus more on like your weaker weaker areas yeah. but still review everything and don't mm -hmm. assume that you know something no, until you, you know. cover it yeah, exactly no. And then, because when you are so nervous, like I, so in nursing, as you guys know, you have to do a lot of conversions. So conversions, conversions, conversions. So I, I was like in the test and I was so nervous and so overwhelmed because I was nervous because I have to take it at home. So yeah. I have somebody looking here. I, I have that. here. And then I'm also stressing because like, I'm like, do I have enough time? Do I have to go to the bathroom? I was hungry. Like I was just thinking about everything except the exam. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> After I took it and I looked at I was like lacking on math, would you best believe I did a lot of math and I review everything else, but I also like focus on math and then like every day I would do like a math problem, but every like and also do everything else. And when I took it a second time, it was really hard. Like the whole time I was taking it, I'm like, I'm not gonna pass. Like mm -hmm. you let the first exam get to you, like you yeah. Yeah. So do you feel like it was the material itself was hard or mentally because you felt the first exam that it was hard? No. Like was it a material hard when, or was it your self esteem that was I didn't know what the oh. heck it was. <laughs> I'm like, when did we saw this? And I'm like, yeah. okay. And then I would try to like remember remind myself, I'm like, okay, breathe, breathe. Like I I was really trying not to get let that get to me mm -hmm. because when I let that get to me, I I lost sight. Like I was just spiraling. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was gonna ask you know if that like when you fell out the first time, the second one is it harder? Do you know? I don't know, oh, okay. but I feel oh. like this time. And then I I spoke with some some of my classmates that took it the second time mm -hmm. with me, and I told them, "Don't you feel like this time was harder?" And they're like, "Yes." And I was like, "Oh, I, like, oh, I think they would make it harder like if you don't yeah. pass the first time. That sounds." It sounds, yeah, yeah, because it's like they can't use the same material yeah. either. They have to switch it up. Yeah. You know, I don't know because I have never had to what Oh, that. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so the whole time I just felt like I'm going to fail. Like, I'm like, I think this is the answer, but I'm not sure. But these other three are not making sense to me, but this one is. So I was like, I, I, and that also helped me because I was able to like talk through it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that shows you that you actually know a lot when yeah. you're able to talk mm -hmm. yourself through it and like break it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's not like, just memorization. Yes. She actually knows the yeah. process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I was okay. I was talking through it and I'm like, okay. And then when I had, literally when I have to press the next button to see if I pass or fail, I couldn't do it. So oh. I called Carlos and I was like, babe, come here. And he's like, why? <laughs> and I was like, can you press this button for me? I literally couldn't. Oh, your heart. And my heart yes. Your anxiety. Yes. Yeah. So I closed my eyes and then he clicked on it. 
And then I looked and I passed and I like I was crying and excited. Mm. So that was for the HESI. You would have thought I've learned my study hobbies for the NCLEX. But one thing with the HESI is that not all all schools uh have the HESI. Yeah. Um so a lot of schools they in, incorporate the HESI because it, it gives them like an idea of like, oh, if students pass the HESI, they have a likely a high chance to pass the NCLEX. Mm -hmm. They don't want a lot of people going in taking the HESI, failing, and then thinking they're going to sit in for the... Yeah, so it gives them, like, an idea of their past fail yeah. rates. Yeah, because those stats matter. Yeah. yeah. Those stats... Because yeah. even... You guys probably have done the same. When you go on the school website, when you're applying from applying to the school, you mm -hmm. want to look at their, like, their stats. Like, you yeah, know... that's what I did. Their graduation rate. Getting their a job. Test, getting yes. a job, everything. Yeah, the same thing for, like, med schools, too. Like, mm -hmm. they'll put, like, um, match match acceptance rates or yeah. things like that all of that is important Very important. it shows the school as well because yeah. you know you'll have a student here and there that may fail but if a more majority of your students not pass is not passing like it's, it's it not bad. looking good it's not look good yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um no yeah because even with me because i'm an add-on because I'm, mm -hmm. i also took the hesse a while back and i think i actually talked about it um uh, my study tips i did Mark Lamette, because they said, you know, that's great to review for the HESI. Is that a free and, resource? Yeah, you can go mm -hmm. online on YouTube. Um, they Reddit. have the audio, audios on YouTube to look at it. And then Reddit has the audios and the uh, reading the notes, material. The yes, written material. Which are, which are very, very helpful. Yeah, you can find them. I think I still have the, I have all the PDFs and everything saved in my email. So just let me know and I can like send it to you. Because we all are trying to make it out here. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But for me, I feel like my main study, study material was Mark Klemek and then using YouTube, um, looking at videos over and over and over. What I also love to do is listen to videos of other students that took the, the HESI and what they did to like pass. And I remember this one girl, this YouTube girl, I forgot her name, but she had a Quizlet that had 800 questions. Mm -hmm. And I studied those 800 and I felt, I felt about... I want to say maybe about 40 of the questions were on the actual HESI. So that mm -hmm. gave me a leverage as well. Those mm -hmm. 800 questions, I already knew 40 of them like by memorization. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. I think they took that down, actually. But no, I found it. Cause I no, remember you, you Yeah, I remember you told me, and we found it with my study group. But because we were next gen or whatever, some of the questions did change. Oh. And we did get home. We did, because so... We would meet, I think another part for NCLEX and HESI that I would recommend to people is a study group. It helps a lot mm -hmm. because we would meet one hour every day, sometimes twice a day, especially when the test was getting closer. We would meet twice a day and stay, and stay as long as we can. But keep in mind, because everybody had like a different schedule, the max that we could sometimes say was one hour. Yes, let's stress the importance of a study group. Mm -hmm. The study groups come in handy. I would say keep your study group or and small, below. Small, yeah. small. Small. Yeah. Keep it small and you don't want to be the smartest one out your study group. No. <laughs> like everyone should be contributing some mm -hmm. way. Like you want to get something out of your study group. Yeah. Like you don't want to be the only one in your study group that knows everything and teaching it, having to teach everyone else everything because then that slows you down. I will yeah. say though, I love study groups too. And, mm -hmm. and I do think there should be a balance. Like there should be someone that challenges you, but I also think it's cool to be able to explain it to your peers because yes. that just shows you, you know the material you know so that kind of will allow you to kind of find where you do have the gaps because if they're asking you questions so you're like wait i actually don't know that yeah let me go you know yeah and then i know if you have some type of like insecurities too about like even going into a study group because maybe you feel like you're not the top of the top uh and you may feel like you're gonna slow slow them down but that's what i'm saying get a really good study group that's willing to teach you as well mm -hmm. um where you learn and again you can contribute in some way because you're not going to know everything no one knows everything and like you guys are all there to study and review the material together yeah yeah because uh like when i since i took the hesse twice mm -hmm. so i did kind of i felt kind of like oh my god i don't even know if these people want me to be in their study group because uh -huh. they passed it at once yeah and then we had all talked about okay after we passed the hesse let's start studying for the NCLEX. And I'm like, I don't know if they want me to be part of their group. Aww. And then I'm like, okay. And then they were all like waiting for me like, did you pass? Did you pass? And I was like, yes, I did. I did. So then they were like, okay, then we're going to start studying. Oh, that's like, so cool. cute. Yeah. They waited? 
Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. yeah. That that's and this sounds like you had a great yeah. study group because mm-hmm. no one like people fail every day. Like you know, mm-hmm. you fail, just don't give up. Keep trying and take it again. But it's not a good feeling to be the only one that fails. No. Um, and then mm-hmm. it's like, oh. I hate no. that feeling. Like, and then especially because we had a, like, a group text, and then, like, they would text, they were, like, after the, the HESI, the exit HESI, when they took it, when I took it the first time, they were, like, this was my high score, and I was, like, oh. I don't need I to know. see that. I don't need to see I that. I hate people like that. Like that. Uh, Even when I pass, I don't know. People are, are like that. Like, oh, what score did you get? What score did you get? Yeah. And for me, even, like, during undergrad, I, I hate it when people would always compare, like, compare just exam scores like even when i passed i was like i don't want to you know be the one standing in front of the class like i passed my oh, exam yeah. because i wouldn't want to make the other person that maybe did not pass yeah um feel feel some type of way yeah. and then they'll compare well you got an 85 i got a 96 i'm like well i still pass. <laughs> you're like i don't I'm, i don't think you understand we both passed yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so then um then we started studying for the NCLEX and then I started getting into my head. I'm like, I think I'm going to fail. Like, I had to take the HESI twice. Like You got to your head. I would have yeah. been scared, too. Like, a lot. like and then I, I feel like once you get into your head, it plays, like, a big role with it taking does. tests. It like, does. you could be, you could know everything, but if your confidence is low, um, you might It'll fail. It'll affect you. It'll yeah, affect yeah, you. Yeah. You'll psych yeah. yourself out for yeah. sure multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. So... Then when I started uh, to studying with the NCLEX, uh, I remember Linda was asking me, like, because me and Linda will see each other, like, almost every day. Yeah, I feel like we were studying. I don't know what I was studying for, but I was done. <laughs> Maybe I was just studying for school, but we were still always studying yeah. together at the coffee yeah. shop and everything. Yeah. You, and, oh, no. Sometimes I came. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you were there, too, but I think... There was a you time where I was studying for the MCAT, too. But that was me and you, because I remember oh. studying a lot mm-hmm. with you. Like, you used to yeah. up all the time. And then Linda would ask me, how many questions are you doing per day? And I was like, 30. She's like, that's not enough. Like for the end. How many do you think is good? It's it's good. You can start off like the first week with doing 30, but you at least want to be able to sit through a whole test. And that Mm -hmm. test can range from 80 all the way up to 150. When I took it, it was 75 to 250 or 265. I guess, yeah. Um, I guess the question is like, when you're studying in the beginning, how many do you think is good? Or don't even do any questions in the beginning. Just start to learn the material. Oh no, do your practice test. I feel mm-hmm. like practice. Yeah. Just he helped a lot. Doing, yeah. yeah. But at least you should be able to be able to sit there for 85 questions, like the minimum, mm-hmm. and then build yourself up to, you know, taking the whole test yeah so when linda told me you're not doing enough and i'm like oh shit i'm like okay i need to do more so then i and she lit fire under her ass <laughs> yeah i was like i need to do more even though like i hadn't had my because so after you take the exit has you need to I, we have to finish that whole semester the semester finish in december and then they will send you a code and you need to sign up and it's this whole process so i wasn't able to sign up for a testing into like the end of february and people did it before that, but I didn't feel ready. And that was one thing that I want to tell you guys, that if you don't feel ready, don't do it. 100% agree. Because a lot of my study group members, they did it like the beginnings of February. I, like, I was the last one to take it for my study group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I did I it. I was too. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I did it because I le- legit did not feel ready. And then... It was one call that I had with one of my other classmates that she's a mom as well. She's mm-hmm. a mom of two. And then I told her, girl, how are you studying? Because, so I, w- I so the first tool that I used was UWorld. And with UWorld, you could do practice questions and then you could watch, you could like read the rationals. Mm-hmm. And I was writing all these rationals when I would get them wrong. And keep in mind, if you do 80 questions, that's a lot. Like that's a lot of rationals to write. And I'm like, I feel like I'm not doing enough because it's taking me it so, long so long to write yeah. these rationals. You feel like you're not so, moving. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I yeah, called her it. and then I was like, how are you studying? And then she's like, we're moms, dude. We don't have time to be writing no rationals. You <laughs> have to write, like download the app. And I was like, there's an app? And then she's like, yeah, there's an app. Because basically I would always do questions when I'm with my laptop, mm-hmm. but the majority of the time when I'm with my laptop or, uh, you know, my laptop is when Diago is not with me, which is not a lot of hours, or at night. And at night, like around 9 p.m., I was already tired for like the whole day. So you don't want to so, have like everything. No, I was yeah. like falling asleep. 
Like yeah. Carlos would be with me, and <laughs> I would be like doing uh, practice questions. I would be like, babe, wake up, babe, wake up, because I would fall asleep. So the one thing that really helped me was that I download, I download View World, the app, mm-hmm. and I download Archer, the app. But Archer, I start doing it when my test day was getting closer. Okay. Because Archer, you only could do it, I think it's only sixty days. Yeah, let's go. Let's yeah, let's go back a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so Archer, they do have they go. You can do ninety days. So ninety yeah. days, you pay like ninety dollars. Um, yeah. And they give you the what? The Q bank. Yeah, they give you the Q bank and they Question give bank? you yeah yeah. And then they give you like uh, something that, yeah, videos, lectures, and uh, you could also take something called the know. readiness ex- the Yeah, the readiness ex- the assessment. CAD. The yes, CAD the CAD exam. I did a lot of CAD exams when I was getting closer to the test. Yeah. But they, they give you all of that. And the readiness exam, basically, they give you, it's like if you're taking the test. Mm-hmm. And then they stop, let's say, at 85 questions. And they even tell you the likelihood of you passing or not passing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I heard if you get three, like in a, three to four in a row, that you're you're likely to pass, then you can go into the NCLEX with a high confident. possibility yes. that you'll pass. Yes. Um, and then even less the price. U World. So I started off with U World. Um, and U World to me, when I took U World, I feel that it was very like the questions that they would ask. It was challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, so I set off for U World the majority of the time, and U World was very expensive. U World, I want to say I paid maybe it was expensive. Maybe the one something or almost yeah two hundred and something yeah. dollars, almost three hundred. And I didn't start the Archer until way later, literally until maybe a week until my exam because mm-hmm. everyone, everyone that I knew that took the exam they said they used Archer a lot of the time and Archer it was set up like the NCLEX mm. so with you world they would just have you answer a bunch of questions do rationale with Archer it was like actually set up as if you're going to take the um the NCLEX which is good because you already get the feel of it yeah and then also I took the advantage of your world because I had Linda Oh, my account. Yeah, I didn't pay for Archie. I got it for somebody. <laughs> and then, oh. um, so I saved some coin there, but then eventually expired. And mm-hmm. then I had to spend some money there, but it's okay. But it was, uh, but yeah, you were a bit more expensive that, than our shirt. You guys, even that is super cheap compared to the MCAT ones. Those are so expensive. How much, how much I was paying like a grand, $500, $400. For one or multiple? For multiple, yeah. I, so I paid it, a grand, for, a grand for Princeton. I paid five hundred for, for um, for oh, blueprint. For I thought you meant total. No, no, no. A grand oh. for Princeton, five hundred for um for blueprint. You got one hundred fifty. That's cheap. No, they compared to that. I thought you meant like total. Girl, uh, what did they that. give you with a grand? Yeah, Videos, um, question bank, um, practice exams, and. Uh, that's it. Yeah. It's overpriced, dude. Yeah. It's the same thing that we got. Oh, yeah. we got a G- oh heck no. Yeah. Yeah. See, you were didn't have all that. Mm-hmm. Archer had. Archer all had. That. Yeah. And it was Archer way cheaper. Yes. It was like the most. It was ninety the bucks for that's ninety nice. days. That's really mm-hmm. nice. I really liked it. And then oh, so what I started doing, I started taking questions, and the ones that I like sometimes. So uh, I don't know, but a lot of mo- moms that I talk to. Uh, because when you're cooking, you know, like you'd be watching like videos yeah. and like watching like las novelas. Instead of doing that, <laughs> I was cooking and I was doing practice questions. Uh, like when I'll go to sleep, I'll be walking and doing practice questions. When I, ev- like, I remember at a coffee shop, I was doing practice questions and I, I don't know if the barista heard of me. But she wrote in the coffee cup, like, oh, you're doing a great job. Oh, and I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> but it's because I was, like, I was trying Studying to squeeze in every second. little minute. Yeah. And then um, I would also, like, I would do practice questions, but I would also do at least once or twice a week, like, a mock test to see how I did and where do I need to, uh, like, fill in those gaps. And then once a week, I would, like, usually over the weekend, I would do the questions that I did wrong again. Mm-hmm. Like, to see if I could rationalize 
why is that the answer? Like without your notes. Yes, stuff. without my notes or anything. I'm like, okay, this is the answer because, and then that gets you to understand the whole, because I feel like with nursing, it's not memorizing. Like you have to understand the whole process. Thing. Yes. Yeah. And a, and a good way to go into these um, practice exams or you're taking a test, even when you're taking the NCLEX, NCLEX is think about safety. Mm -hmm. The whole time they want to make sure you're not going to kill your patient. Mm -hmm. So when you're taking even the practice exam, it's like, which one will save my patient? Which one will kill my patients? Because that's what they're, they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know that, if you don't know how to save your patient or what to look for, um, that's critical. You have to do a little bit more study mm -hmm. um, because like I said, it's about safety, safety, safety. Yeah. Yeah. That was like the majority of the test. I yeah. Feel. Safety and delegation. I feel like even like oh, delegation was important too because it's like if you it's something can be out of your scope. You can't delegate certain things. You can't tell the CNA to do one thing. The CNA can't um, inject medications or some things. Like if you don't know that, it's, that's another that's basically a, important. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know to know your role and know everyone else's role as well. Yeah, because we I remember I had a lot of questions about delegation, mm -hmm. and yeah, you really need to know everybody else's everybody else's role and also it was the the tag questions so like black tag green tag yellow tag oh red tag the triage, the like, triage. which like the mm -hmm. level though they had some good questions like if there was like a mass maybe like a mass earthquake mm -hmm. that a lot of people were injured it's, which yeah. one would you see first mm -hmm. and what those the color of the tags mean mm -hmm. i forgot i know so, what black like, me yeah <laughs> No, I think I know what yellow mean, red, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so those those were questions that um that came up a lot and also like you guys said it's always good to contribute because I be, I think he, taking the HESI a second time it was bad but it was good as well. Why? Because when I went into my study group for the NCLEX, because I was so fresh in the material and I was able to understand and grab the material so well. I was the one teaching them as well when it came to the NCLEX. There you go. And I was like, oh my God, I know this. Like, you know, like that's when you <laughs> kind of like um, surprise yourself that yeah. even if, if it was something bad, because I was bummed out. I was like, man, I got to take this twice. Like, I kind of felt like a failure in a way. But then I was like, no, this was an opportunity to learn and this was an opportunity to grow because I was able to see where my gaps were, I was able to fill on those gaps. And now, instead of me being quiet in my study group, I was able to teach them like, hey, because we would do, each of us would do like, a, like read a question, read the answer and say, why, that, why does the, that's the answer? Mm -hmm. that's and great. then, um, so sometimes when my um, study group members would not know, I'd be like, no, it's not that because of this and this and this. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm able to teach back, which means that you know them. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Like my grandma says, you know your shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then uh, when the NCLEX came, I, it was a whole thing because taking the NCLEX is a whole process, even just to sign up for the test. Wait, before we get there, I want to go still mm -hmm. add on more about the test taking. Mm -hmm. um, it's also good to like to know yourself and know your weakest areas. Like we said before, is you, in a sense, want to cover everything, but you want to focus in on your weakest areas. For me, I love psych. Uh, like anything psych, I got it. But peds. I struggle with peds because peds there's a lot of math and I'm not I don't do good with math so when I was studying I knew to like focus on peds yes review psych a little bit to stay up like fresh but like my main focus was like my weak points and I know like Kathy said what you wrote in rationales I wasn't writing down the rationales either not because I don't I have a kid or don't have a kid but for me I knew myself writing. I take for and it's not going to be helpful. It's for not. You. It's not going to be helpful. Like I would spend way too much time writing down rationales, opposed to just reviewing, like reviewing the rationales, taking taking the test again, understanding why I got it wrong. It took way too much time for me to write stuff down. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to write stuff down. Yeah. But I had classmates who learned by making flashcards, writing stuff down. I did that in the beginning. I but remember as, you doing it. In the yeah, but yeah. It, it was like slowing me down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember we were at the mm -hmm. coffee shop and you were like, I haven't even moved. Like, yeah, I'm still doing yeah. too much. And then you get stressed because, like, I remember at a point that I was just writing this paragraph and then my hand, I'm like, yeah. move fast. Yeah. Like, I was telling myself, move faster, but my hand would not write faster 
and I'm yeah. and I'm assuming you would feel like you wasted a day too. Yeah, right? time. like yeah. you wasted time, and then you're you're wasting your time writing, and then like for me, I used to write and didn't even open the notebook to review the rationales. Mm-hmm. So it's like for me, it's like at least. I didn't write it down, but I can go back and read it. And maybe the ones I keep getting wrong, I'll write it down. Because, you know, they say if you write stuff down, it stay in your head. Mm-hmm. But if I keep getting it wrong, then maybe I'll write it down. But I'm not spending my time writing it down. Yeah. Um, and then to for addition to that, you because I feel like we use the same study material. Mm-hmm. So I took the old um, version of the NCLEX. Mm-hmm. Um, I was literally, my group was the last ones to take it before they switched over to the new gen. Uro did help me a lot because, I, like I said, I started with UWorld, and to me, they're asking very challenging questions. So when I moved on to Archer that last week, because I used my classmates' account, it was more straightforward in a sense. Not not that it was easier, but I just I feel like I was able to understand it a little bit better. And then those was like those were those were the two main study materials that I use. Oh, and Mark Clement. But also, they say not to overwhelm yourself with different, a bunch of different study materials because then it's like you're studying from like a bunch of different sources. And it's like, no, just choose two, if anything. But how I am is like, I want to study everything. I was the same (laughs) way. I was the same way. I remember when I was studying for the MCAT, I grabbed Blueprint, Princeton, um, U World. A little bit of everything. Yeah, Yeah. because I I remember you you were using U World. I was like, I use that. And then for me, YouTube, because I'm a visual learner. That's what I'm saying. Know yourself. What works for Jasmine may not work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, Jasmine is good with writing notes and everything. I'm practicing, but I know that's not my strong suit. Um, just making nice I'm, like, I, I'm nice starting to notes. make like diagrams. I think that's fun. And yeah. visualizing things. Exactly. So mm-hmm. me, I'm a visual learner. Hold that thought. Stay tuned next week for part two of this week's episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of PD3 with your hosts, Linda, Jasmine, and Kathy. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe at a potent dose of three so that you never miss an episode and your weekly dose.